Peggy 12. À la Renaissance. During the Renaissance, compared to the Middle Ages, we are already in the development of polyphonies, the development of music also purely instrumental and not necessarily just vocal and accompanied by some instruments, the development of families of instruments played in consort in the same way as vocal families. Musicians started to travel a lot during this time period. This is also something very important, as is the appearance of the printing press. Because thanks to the printing press, we're going to be able to send the music traveling. At the end of the 18th century, we continued to improvise on what is called Le Folie d'Espagne, which was a very, very famous theme that traveled everywhere and is seen in La Espagne, for example. There's also a few examples in Humankind. Very famous bass music that traveled and which we improvised on. Improvisation has always been there. We always improvised. It's the art of music, in fact. And the basso continuo develops, that is, an encrypted bass line. If we want to make a comparison, a little bit like a current jazz grid, and where suddenly the viola de gamba, the cello, the harpsichord, lutes and teorbs improvise in relation to this given bass line and given figures. So the notes are indicated, the harmonies are indicated, but the way to play them, to drive them, to pass them on, remains at the discretion of the musician. When to date exactly the appearance of the viola de gamba is pretty difficult, but the first records are at the beginning of the 16th century and was developed primarily in Spain. Well, it's the entire Mediterranean basin, but it's primarily in Spain that during its golden age, what we call the Spanish golden age, that this instrument is developed. It's the evolution of the hurdy-gurdy. And the hurdy-gurdy itself may be the rest of a cross between the viola de mano, the little Spanish guitar, and the rhubarb, the bowed string instrument from northern Africa. There are also interesting mixtures found during this period, like the appearance of the lute, for example, which clearly comes from the oud. So the viola de gamba is a string instrument, most of the time with six strings, tuned in quads with a third in the middle, like a guitar. And in fact, it's because it's a lute with a bow. It's tuned like a lute. It's an instrument that was considered as being able to imitate human voice to perfection. Maybe it's for this reason that we see this type of decoration developing. Renaissance music is a little like its architecture. It's also the rediscovery of antiquity, of the ancient world. And in humankind, we also used instruments a little more scholarly, such as the lira de braccio or the lirone. For example, the lira de braccio was used to accompany while improvising a melody on well-known poetry at the time. The high viola de gamba or the soprano viola de gamba was an instrument used to accompany singing. And, by the way, we used it in Humankind for the main title. We recorded several types of music to try to illustrate the different countries represented in Humankind. And we tried to illustrate the beautiful melodies that could be found at the time. So here I'm thinking of songs, for example, Greensleeve or Browning, which is actually the leaves be green, or songs like Daphne, which are beautiful themes which have been remade everywhere. We also tried to illustrate the side a little more scholarly from the Renaissance with songs like 
Gibbons, for example, or Jacques Arcadelt with his madrigals, O Felici, O Chimei, with music that's maybe a little bit more complex, but very sought after and very refined. We tried to illustrate the different facets that best represent this time period. Mm-hmm. 